The end of the War of the Ring and the destruction of the One Ring itself brought about a completely different age in Middle-earth. The main threat had been defeated and the Age of Men had begun. Elves, Dwarves, Orcs and all other magical creatures began to slowly fade from this point on to make way for the race of men. But what exactly happened to Mordor? What happened to the thousands of Orcs that were still left alive after Sauron's defeat? Let's find out. Before we start, my friends, I would like to point out that, as you can see, we are rapidly approaching 100,000 subscribers on this channel. It would be one amazing early Christmas present if we could reach it before the end of the year. And seeing as only 19% of our viewers have actually subscribed, I feel like this should be a pretty easily accomplishable goal. So please, if you enjoy the content here, take two seconds to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Thanks a lot, guys. So the Orcs were, of course, the main servants in Sauron's armies. Their strength didn't necessarily come from their martial ability, but just from sheer numbers. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how strong or formidable you are, if your army is outnumbered 5 to 1 or possibly even more, you don't stand much of a chance. Well, most of the time. Orcs were created by the first Dark Lord Morgoth before the First Age and served him and his later successor in their quest to dominate Middle-earth. Tolkien Gateway states that Melkor was the first to learn of the awakening of the elves. He soon began sending evil spirits among the elves who planted seeds of doubt against the Valar. It's also rumoured that some of the elves were being captured by a rider if they strayed too far, and the elves later believed these were brought to Atumno where they were cruelly tortured and twisted into orcs. Then after Morgoth's defeat, the orcs along with the other fallen Maia and servants of the Dark Lord delved deep into the caves, pits and tunnels of Middle-earth and the underground fortress of Antumno and Angband. They multiplied over thousands of years and spread throughout Middle-earth. When they first resurfaced, they were only a small problem. But when Morgoth made his return, he rallied them all under his name and unleashed them on Beleriand. They were used in many wars over the next few thousand years, but they were almost all wiped out in the War of Wrath, but those that did survive fled east towards the mountains of Angmar and other surrounding areas. Then moving forward a bit, sometime around the year 1000 of the Second Age, Sauron reappeared in Middle-earth and made the land of Mordor his realm, and then he started to build the foundations of Barad-dûr. During the War of the Elves and Sauron in the Second Age, around 1700, the Orcs formed the main host of Sauron's power. Now, Despite the immeasurable number of Orcs present, the battle was won by the Elves and the Numenorians due to their united force and numbers. Until Sauron's final downfall in the Third Age, Orcs remained the backbone of the armies of Mordor. But after the second Dark Lord's downfall, they were killed in large numbers at the Black Gates and slain nearly to the last orc by the men of the West in the period after the Great Victory. The captains bowed their heads, and when they looked up again, behold, their enemies were flying and the power of Mordor was scattering like dust in the wind. As when death smites the swollen brooding thing that inhabits their crawling hill and holds them all in sway, ants will wander witless and purposeless and then feebly die. So the creatures of Sauron, orc or troll or beast spell enslaved, ran hither and thither mindless, and some slew themselves or cast themselves in pits, or fled wailing back to hide in holes and dark lightless places far from hope. But the men of Rhun and of Harad, Easterling and Southron, saw the ruin of their way and the great majesty and glory of the captains of the West. And those that were deepest and longest in evil servitude hated the West, and yet were proud and bold, in their turn now gathered themselves for a last stand of desperate battle. But the most part fled eastward as they could, and some cast their weapons down and sued for mercy. In other parts of Middle-earth, however, such as the Misty Mountains, the Orcs were not nearly so dependent on Sauron, and it can be assumed that the majority of the Orcs that survived the battles before Erebor at the end of the Third Age would have survived. We know that as a race they reproduce in the same way that men and elves do, and we know that they were originally bred, not really continuously created as such, by Morgoth. 
then were most likely bred on an industrial scale in Mordor by Sauron, but elsewhere they were self-sustaining and pretty much self-governing. In the early years of the Fourth Age, men, dwarves and elves would probably have massacred the orcs as part of a peace-seeking policy, but it's very likely that within a generation of men, let's say around 20 to 50 years, this slaughtering would have come to an end and the surviving orcs would have just been left to their own devices in the most remote mountains of Middle-earth, where they could survive underground with little need to interact with others. At the end of the day, without their huge numbers, they're not really that much of a threat. Then during Aragorn's reign as king, he conquered the lands of Harad and Cand along with the lands around Lake Rune, adding them all to the reunited kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor. He eventually chose to give the lands around Lake Nurnan in the south of Mordor to the formerly enslaved men of Mordor and possibly the surrounding orcs, letting that be their homeland and just leaving them be. As for the plains of Gorgoroth itself, it was so badly polluted by Sauron that it was completely uninhabitable and an area pretty much incapable of housing life anyway. Not only that, but the remaining effects from a volcano eruption would have had a long-lasting impact on the area. Aragorn's time as king is the turning point for Middle-earth. Multiple ancient races gave way for men to take over. Thus the orcs were confined to certain lands and forbidden from spreading out. This continued until they eventually became no more. Just as with all other magical creatures in Middle-earth, those that were left just eventually faded away. So my question for you guys today is this. If you were a surviving orc that had been serving Sauron for thousands of years, and after his defeat you were left to do what you pleased, would you choose to stand and fight in the name of your master, or would you choose a dark hole somewhere in a mountain or a cave to hide and spend the rest of your life? That's a bit of a silly question for today, but let's discuss in the comments down below nonetheless. Okay, so that's it from me today, my friends. Time has come, as always, to thank our patrons. A big shout-out goes to the members of our three highest tiers, Kevin, Abram, Mac, Lofindel of Gondolin, Nasheath, Denver Steel, Gregory, John, Andrew, and Pirate747. We hope you all managed to tune in for the Q&A and the official announcement for our short film last week. We were blown away by the positive feedback on it, and we seriously cannot wait to get to work. If you're interested in supporting the project yourselves, it's not too late, you can jump on our Patreon and pick from a variety of tiers. 100% of support from that goes directly towards the budget of the film. So, this is truly a movie funded by the fans, for the fans. We are so excited to get started. Thank you all so much for watching. I apologise, I'm slightly bunged up this week, so I apologise for my voice. Uh, but hopefully you still enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.